In this video, I wanna show you how I got this shot. Everything from camera settings to what gear I used and processing, don't go away. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I do photography tutorials, I share tips and tricks and do occasional gear reviews as well. This video is all about this image. Now this is an image taken looking down over the Riverside Expressway, a really busy stretch of road that runs along the Brisbane River. This was an image I've been after for some time and I'm really pleased that I was finally able to get it. In this video, I wanna talk about how I got the shot. I wanna share with you the camera settings. I wanna talk about the gear I used. I've got tips for you on lighting and time of day, even the location where I took the image. Everything you need to know to go out yourselves and take this type of photo. Now, before we get into it, I wanna say a big thank you to Skillshare for kindly supporting my channel and sponsoring this video. Now first I want to talk about the location where I took the image because for me it's one of the reasons why it works so well. There's a few factors. Firstly, the elevated position looking down on the cars on the freeway works really, really well. The curve of the road um, just acts as a leading line. It just draws the, the eye of the viewer through the image to the skyline in the distance, the sun setting behind the buildings. There's a few factors that just come together and gel and it really works. This is a very popular location. I certainly wasn't the first person to take an image from this spot and I certainly won't be the last. Now if you live in Brisbane or plan to visit sometime soon, this location can be found on Vulture Street where the street crosses over the Pacific Highway. Just make sure you look out for the small gap in the blue railings next to the lamppost. I'll put a link below this video that will take you straight to the location on Google Maps. Now, as I often say on this channel, light is everything when it comes to photography. And I knew I would be pointing my camera in the general direction of the sun. And I knew I would probably have to wait for the sun to set and go behind the buildings to make this image work. So I got there nice and early, give myself plenty of time to park the car, to walk to the location and get all my gear set up ready to shoot. Okay, so let's talk about the gear I used to get the image. Uh, the camera was the Nikon Z6, which is a full frame mirrorless camera. I'm using it to record this video. The lens was the 14 to 30 millimeter wide angle lens, which is designed for the Z mount. I'd actually only purchased this a couple of days prior to uh, taking the photo, so I was very keen to test it. I also had a Manfrotto tripod with me, a remote for the Z6, and I was also testing out a Nissi Night Film filter, which is actually still on the front of the lens, and I'll talk more about that later in the video. Now I would like to add that this image is more about location, composition, time of day, and most importantly technique, rather than the gear I was using. Anybody can take photos like these if you're willing to learn some basics and get out of the auto mode. Now before I get into the camera settings, I just want to talk about a very special offer from Skillshare, the sponsors of this video. Now there's never been a better time to learn new skills, so if you are creative like myself, then check out Skillshare, an online learning community for creatives. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, and much more for just $10 a month with an annual subscription. But as a subscriber to this channel, you can try it for free. This week I've been watching a video on creative storytelling and editing with Nikki Stevens. So don't forget the first 1000 of my subscribers to click on the link below this video will get a two month free trial of premium membership with Skillshare. So why not explore your creativity and learn something new with Skillshare. And many thanks once again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. Make sure you check out that special offer details in the links below this video. Now back to the image. When taking a picture, composition is one of the first things I think about. So when I got to my location, I set the camera up on a tripod. There was just about enough of a gap between the railings to squeeze the lens through. And I went for a vertical composition rather than a horizontal composition. So I turned the camera on its side. And um, that's often referred to as portrait mode as opposed to horizontal, which is usually called landscape mode. Now this was a landscape, but I wanted to get plenty of uh, sky in. I also wanted to get the freeway in and all the cars moving around. So I decided for the vertical composition. 
Now I mentioned I was testing a new lens and I was using the 14 to 30 millimeter wide angle lens from Nikon. But interestingly, I wasn't actually using it at its widest. I was shooting at 30 millimeters. And that's because any wider and it just pushed the buildings and everything too far away. And it didn't really suit the subject and the location, to be honest. And what's interesting here is shooting at 30 millimeters on a full frame camera like the Z6 is almost exactly the equivalent of shooting at 18 millimeters on a cropped sensor DSLR camera like this. So if you're watching this video and you've got the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens, you would have got almost exactly the same view with your camera. With my composition done, the next thing I had to think about was focusing. Now I was focusing about one third into the image, which is generally a good rule of thumb for most landscape photography. Um, and the focus mode I had the camera set to because it was a Nikon was AFS. This is autofocus single or sometimes called single autofocus. If you've got a Canon camera, this same mode is called one shot. And this is perfect for non-moving subjects. Now some of you might be thinking, Hang on a moment, he just mentioned that he's photographing a non-moving subject, but surely the cars on the road are moving. And you're not wrong, they are. But this is a landscape photo. The cars are going to blur because they're moving. That's the whole point of the image. I actually want the cars to be blurry. So focusing on them would actually be pointless. So for this type of a subject, you would choose a single servo focus mode, and you would focus on something in your frame, in your composition that isn't moving. Making sure that your camera doesn't move when doing a long exposure is incredibly important. So as well as using a sturdy solid tripod, turning off the image stabilization, I like to also use a remote device. Now I use a wide remote just because it's quick and easy to set up. And if you've got a camera that doesn't have this option, just use your camera self timer because every camera has that. So let's now move on to the exposure settings. And these are defined by how much light is available at the time you take your picture. Now let's start with ISO. ISO, I went for 100, which is at the lower end of the scale. And this is because I wanted a clean image with virtually none or minimal digital noise. Now ISO is one of three ways of controlling light. If you increase the ISO, effectively your picture will be brighter. And if you decrease the ISO, effectively your picture gets darker. Now it's often assumed that if you're taking photos at night time and in low light, you increase the ISO. But when you do, your picture will look really grainy. This is called digital noise and I don't really want that. So that's why I set the ISO low at 100. Good rule of thumb and I've mentioned it before, where possible, ISO, keep it low. Next up is aperture, which is actually found inside the lens. It's a great way of controlling light, but also affects something called depth of field, which I've done in a separate video link below. Depth of field is all about sharpness and how much of your image is in focus. Um, general rule of thumb with landscape photographers is to aim for something around about f11 to f16, which should give you a fairly nice sharp image throughout. Now, when I first arrived at my location, there was a bit too much light in the sky. The sun was just starting to go behind the buildings and because it was uh, so bright and because I wanted to find a way of limiting that light I went actually for a small aperture to begin with I set the aperture to f22 so with the ISO set to 100 plus limiting the light passing through the lens by using the f22 aperture I had to use a slow shutter speed for my first exposure, but that was of course intentional. A slow shutter speed means that the shutter is open longer and the longer the shutter is open, the more blur we're gonna get on the cars on the freeway. For my first shot, the shutter speed was one third of a second. You can see in this first shot that it's still very light. The sun is peeking through the gaps in the building. Some of the drivers have put their headlights on and with the shutter open for one third of a second, of course the cars are starting to blur. So with my first test shot taken, it now becomes a waiting game. And of course, I'm waiting for the sunset. I'm waiting for the perfect light. But I continue to take photos. And if you look carefully, you can see the sun slowly moving down towards the horizon. Also note that the sun has this starburst effect. I often get people asking me about this. This effect will happen when you use a smaller aperture, which is a bigger F number. And remember, these shots are taken using small apertures, currently F22. So you you should give this a try. The starburst effect is quite easy. You need bright points of light, it works really well at night time, and you want to use a smaller aperture. 
about 30 minutes into shooting and I wanted to try a slightly longer exposure. This image was shot at three seconds. I had to lower the ISO to 50 to get it. And this is the raw image straight out of camera. This is the edited version. And exactly 20 minutes later, I got the shot I was looking for. Now this was my favorite image of the day. The sky has darkened. We've got a beautiful orange sunset. The city lights look amazing. There's even a few clouds in the sky to add interest. Shutter speed here was 1.6 seconds. Aperture f11 and ISO slight increase to 250. I'm also using a Nissi natural night filter for this image. And this is a filter that I'm currently testing. Um, I'm gonna be posting some images on Instagram so you can check those out. If you're interested in finding more about this filter or if you'd like to see it reviewed on this channel just let me know in the comments below. Now I do think I struck gold when I took these images so the conditions were as close to perfect as you're going to get. Of course I could have been unlucky it could have been an overcast dull day. I would have still got the light trails from the cars as they moved down the freeway that's not the issue but the image wouldn't have had the same impact it wouldn't have looked as nice. So light is everything and sometimes you just got to be patient sometimes it's a waiting game. Now I shoot raw images with my cameras and that means that when the image comes straight out of the camera it sometimes looks a bit dull and flat compared to JPEG equivalents and that's because a raw image has not been processed. It's up to you to do that yourself. So what I want to do now is take you through a very quick edit in Lightroom so you can see how I take an image from this to this. Okay, so gonna just show you a very quick edit in Lightroom. So this is the image, and uh, this image is really contrasty, and there's a big difference between the light in the sky versus the very dark shadow areas uh, at the bottom of the image in the foreground. If we move over to the histogram over to the right, the left-hand side is the shadows, and you can see a big peak here. This is your mid-tones and highlights. Well, there's, there's not much in the way of highlights, to be honest. So first thing we're gonna do is reduce these shadow areas by going down to the shadows slider and sliding to the right immediately you see a massive improvement in the image and the histogram has completely changed now we've got a lot more data in the middle of the frame the image looks a lot better already pressing the backslash button on the keyboard allows me to toggle between the starting image and our edits so far next I'm going to go to the highlight slider and I'm going to drop that down a touch and this will just calm that sky down that looks pretty cool. I'm going to go to the whites. Now if I decrease or increase, I can see what I increased. It looks awful. I'm just going to decrease the whites a touch. I'm going to go to the blacks. It's going to make the image really dark. Um, I'm going to just increase the blacks actually a little bit. And then I'm going to go down to dehaze. If I decrease the dehaze, it's going to make the image look really flat and uncontrasty. If I increase the hay, uh, sorry, dehaze, that's going to really look make the sky look really cool and bring out all those lights um okay so look i've hardly done anything just a couple of very simple changes highlights shadows a uh, bit of dehaze and that's a big change already backslash button again just to see the difference between the two um i might just push up that whites a tiny bit and there you go. Now, obviously, there's a lot more to Lightroom than that. But I just wanted to show you how just scratching the surface, just playing with some of the basic tools in Lightroom, you can make a massive difference to an image. So I just want to recap some of the things I've talked about in this video, a bit of a checklist if you like, starting with composition. Composition should always be the number one thing that you're thinking about because it can make or break an image. It's as simple as that. After that, I talked about focusing, making sure I'm not just focusing in the correct spot, but that I'm using the correct focus mode. On a Nikon, AFS for non-moving subjects and for a Canon, this is called one shot. Onto the camera settings and these control your exposure. ISO 100, 200. Remember, ISO, keep it low if you want an image that is grain free and doesn't suffer from digital noise. Next is aperture. For landscapes, somewhere between f11 and f16 should be perfect. And finally, the shutter speed. Well, with the ISO set and the aperture set, all you've got to do now is find a shutter speed that balances your light meter so it sits at the zero. Easy. Now, if you're not quite ready to shoot full manual yet, 
A good mode to try is aperture priority because you can lock in the ISO and you can lock in the aperture and the camera selects an appropriate shutter speed that will give you a nicely balanced image. Now I'd like to say a big thank you once again to Skillshare for supporting my channel and sponsoring this video. If you would like to see more How I Got The Shot videos, let me know. Give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. New videos every single week and I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya, bye.